In this video, let's explore very simply how coronavirus vaccines work. When we get infected with the coronavirus, the viral particle enters into our body, hijacks the machinery of our cells, reproduces like mad, and finally attacks and wrecks havoc in our body. While some of us can fight off the infection, others are not able to deal with the massive increase in inflammation and they succumb to it. Now, if only there were a way to let our body know that the attack was coming. This is exactly what vaccines do. Coronavirus vaccines work by exposing the people who get vaccinated to small amounts of the protein that's found on the surface of the coronaviruses, known as the spike protein, this guy here. So there's really three different strategies that are being used to develop coronavirus vaccines. The first uses a harmless virus to deliver the instructions for the spike protein. The second is actually making the spike protein in a research lab and then injecting that protein itself. And the third uses mRNA to deliver the instructions for the spike protein to our cells. All three of these strategies are currently being developed. For example, the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine that's been in the news a lot is using the classic viral strategy while Novavax and the Sanofi GSK vaccines are both using the synthetic spike protein strategy, and the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines that are currently being rolled out around the world are using the mRNA strategy. So the way that this is typically done is using the virus strategy. Here, the genetic code of the protein you want an immune response to is placed into a harmless virus. That way, there is no way for the patient to actually get the coronavirus because the vaccine doesn't contain all the parts of the coronavirus. Instead, it contains the instructions for the spike protein and then the parts of a harmless virus. So this harmless virus engineered to make the spike protein of the coronavirus so that when this virus is injected into a patient's cells, the patient's own cells will start to make the spike protein. That's not normal. So your immune system will see it and they will start making T cells and antibodies to mount a full immune response against it. And the great thing about an immune response is that our immune response doesn't just recognize new threats, but it actually remembers the threats you've seen in the past. So the next time you're exposed to a coronavirus that has the, the spike protein, your body is able to see it and quickly mount an antibody and a T cell response to destroy those coronaviruses before they're able to multiply and infect other cells in your body. So this is the traditional system and it uses a harmless virus to make the viral protein. mRNA vaccines are very different because they really cut out that harmless virus entirely. Instead of delivering the instructions within the virus, mRNA vaccines just deliver the instructions by themselves, encoded in a strand of mRNA. If you've taken a biology course, you might be familiar with the central dogma of biology, which states that our genetic code is stored in DNA in our nucleus. That code can be transcribed into RNA or messenger RNA. And then that messenger RNA gets translated into proteins. So we have this three-step process. We have DNA in our nucleus, and that goes to RNA in our cytoplasm, and then that gets translated into protein. So the DNA in the nucleus is very stable. This lasts for decades. The same copy exists in every single cell in your body. The mRNA, the stuff that's made in between DNA and protein, this is kind of like a post-it note. Maybe you scribble down a phone number or something you need to pick up from the store. You don't intend for that note to last forever. It's intended to be a very short-lived message. RNAs are very short-lived. In fact, the average RNA in your cells lasts just two minutes before it's destroyed. And within those few minutes that these RNAs exist in your cytoplasm, they're able to interact with the ribosomes. This is the machinery that translates the instructions encoded in the RNA and makes a protein based on those instructions. Those proteins, including the spike protein, can now last for hours to days, long enough for your immune system to come see those spike proteins and generate an immune response to them. So why use mRNA rather than the traditional viral method? Well, one of the biggest things is that these vaccines can be made rapidly. From sequencing the virus back in January to the very first mRNA vaccine candidate, it was just a few weeks. Secondly, the production uses chemistry instead of biology to produce. So instead of needing cell culture or chicken eggs to make lots and lots of this viral vaccine product, we can use cell-free chemistry, which potentially can be scaled to very large levels. And finally, mRNA's very short half-life could potentially make them an even safer vaccine option as they lack any of the other viral components that could trigger an adverse response 
within your body. So when we get vaccinated, there's no way for us to actually have the coronavirus in our body because of the vaccine, because we're only giving parts of the virus to the body or another inactivated virus. And there's no way for the body to make the entire virus by itself. And there's no way for the vaccine to actually harm or interact with the DNA because our DNA is protected inside the nucleus of a cell, whereas the vaccine only ever reaches the cytoplasm. So when we use different strategies to relay the information about the spike protein to our immune cells, we are obviously going to get different levels of protection, different efficacies. Would you like a video of what efficacy is and what it means when they say 95% efficacy of a vaccine? Let me know in the comments below. This is Dr. Rukmini Sridharan. And I'm Professor James Ingram. And stay tuned for the next video in this series.